Guys, I passed. I have no idea how I did it. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how I passed the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam. So I'm going to talk about why I decided to take the exam, a little bit about the exam, what my exact preparation was, and what my results were. First, why I decided to take the exam. So you may have seen my last video about studying for AWS exams. I will put it here if you haven't seen it yet, but essentially I went through and I took and I passed the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. And the CCP exam is the most entry level exam that there is. But the thing about it is that it's a pretty good head start for starting to study for the Solutions Architect Associate exam, which is by far the most common certification that AWS offers and probably in the industry as a whole. Since that's the case, I had a bit of a head start on studying and passing this exam has just been something that I wanted to do anyway, so I went ahead and took it. When talking about why one decides to take the exam, the question comes up fairly often about what is the actual value of taking and passing these certification exams? And I think there are two. So one would be practical knowledge. So ideally you're going to be learning things that you can actually apply that will open up job opportunities for you, that will give you more abilities and more value that you can add at your job and just things that you can do, parts of the stack that you can be aware of. The other thing is that credentials just kind of look good by nature. And if you can take and pass a few of these uh, at the very minimum, it's evident that you are motivated enough to study and pass and ideally that you can actually do this work. So I would say those are the two considerations that I think about when taking these exams. That said, I think most practical and valuable knowledge comes by doing. And so I would emphasize courses, which I'll talk about, that focus on doing rather than just going through a bunch of information. Okay, that's why I decided to take the exam. A little bit about the exam itself. So it's 65 questions and you have 130 minutes to complete the exam. And so if you're doing the math, that's about two minutes per question. That is tough because these are all scenario-based questions, meaning you're thrust into a hypothetical scenario and you have to pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. There could be two answers that could both be right. Potentially, you have to look at the scenario and use the best judgment based on hints that they give you, based on requirements for fictitious clients and that kind of thing to figure out what the best answer is. You also have multiple choice and also multiple answer uh, types of questions. Multiple choices, you have several options and you pick one. Multiple select, I believe they call it, is where you have to pick all that apply. And those are pretty tough. The purpose of the exam is that it's a role-based exam, which is a kind of AWS exam. The other are kind of domain specific. So that would be like ML or big data or security, something like that. The role specific exams are solutions architect, developer, and sysops engineers and so this is the most entry level solutions architect exam okay so how did i prepare you may know if you saw my last video that i used a combination of anki and started very far in advance and kind of ran out of time because the anki algorithm didn't allow me to go through all the flashcards. I, I kind of had the opposite problem here which is that i had already rescheduled twice and two is the limit and so I went to reschedule a third time because I wasn't feeling prepared and it turned out that I couldn't reschedule. So I had to basically just deal with the date that I've been given and try and prepare as best as I could given the constraints I had, which was about a week and a half. Now I hadn't been doing a ton of studying since I took the last exam, which was about four or five months ago at least. And so I had some knowledge, but I definitely needed to brush up and I also needed to prepare for the specifics of this exam and the rigors that it entails. And so I was pretty worried. I was kind of freaking out a little bit and I knew that I hadn't started studying probably far enough, definitely not as long as I did before I took the CCP exam. And so I was definitely pretty concerned. So given that I only had about 10 or 11 days to prepare, the first thing I did was to go and start watching a free online course from Free Code Camp. They have a couple of the AWS exams on there. The only downside with these is that you're basically just watching the guy, Andrew Brown, kind of click through and show you how things work, but he doesn't really do as much to explain the why behind it and kind of some of the theory which you need to be able to answer the scenario based questions. So I started out watching Andrew and just realized I wasn't going to be able to get 
ready in the amount of time that I had if I kept watching these kind of more passive courses. So I went online and bought a course from Adrian Cantrell. I will link it below, but Adrian is very well known and has a bunch of courses. He's passed every AWS certification. And so I wanted to get his course because it's way more hands-on. He explains the theory, but he also has a bunch of examples that you're supposed to follow along with him and do and really see how the services work. I mentioned before that I am a big fan of learning by doing, and I think Adrian's courses approximate that a lot more closely than some others. And so I found his course really helpful. The only thing about Adrian's course is that it is really long, and that is a good thing, assuming that you have the time to go through it. It's about 50 hours of video content, but I only made it about 30% of the way through, and I knew that I still hadn't filled in all the gaps, and I definitely needed to focus down on the areas where I needed to do more work, where my knowledge was a little bit more weak. So I also started taking practice tests. Now, I took the practice test last time from John Bonso, which you can buy through Udemy, and I ended up buying AWS Solutions Architect exams when they were on sale for $10, which was awesome. So I had six practice tests waiting for me, and I started taking those as well. So the only problem with taking the practice tests was with me because I failed three of them. And so I was pretty concerned going into the actual exam day. I only had enough time for three, and they helped as far as showing me where my weak areas were, but I didn't actually get that feeling of being well prepared because I didn't end up passing an exam before I went in for the real thing. The Bonso practice exams are supposed to be a bit harder than the actual thing, but I didn't know that they were 15% harder, which is about what I needed to make up between uh, what I was getting on the exams, which was in the 50s, and what a passing score is, which is about 72. So that was all I was able to do in terms of preparation. And like I said, I was pretty concerned going in, didn't have terribly high hopes. And on the exam day, I went in and did the whole thing where I went to an exam center, which I did last time, and had to wear the mask. There's tons of procedures to make sure you don't cheat. And at the end of the test, I pushed the button, and I saw this beautiful screen which said pass. And they don't tell you to score right away, they just tell you pass fail. And I was overjoyed, I was so excited, and just kind of beside myself that I'd managed to actually pass this thing given how my performance had been leading up. And so I was just really excited. Yes! That's right. I got in the car and as you guys saw at the beginning was just kind of in shock a little bit. No clue how I passed that, really interested to see the results and what the breakdown was, but just relieved right now. And uh, really just excited that I didn't have to concern myself with this exam because studying is actually kind of stressful. It reminded me of being in college and there's just a lot of information. I really didn't wanna to have to go through the whole process again. And so I was excited not to and just kind of went on with my day and was really excited about that. So that's how the exam went. And then a little bit later, I got my results. So the way it works when you end up doing one of these exams and passing is that sometime later, they get in touch with you and send you your score where they give you a breakdown per section or per topic so that you can see how you did and if you need to brush up on anything for next time around. I ended up getting a 73, which is basically 1% over passing. They say that 72 is passing, but it's actually like a floating number depending on how people do. It can be a little bit more, a little bit less. So it may not be an exaggeration to say that I passed by like zero questions, that if I'd missed one more, I might not have passed. So it was very close. And I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I passed with a score like that, honestly. But the thing with pass-fail is that a pass is a pass. It doesn't really matter what the actual score was. And so I'm gonna take it. I know where I need to improve, specifically VPC and kind of networking stuff. I'm really weak on and I definitely want to get better at, but I do feel I learned a good bit. My philosophy on AWS is that as long as you know the core seven or eight services, you can be super productive, and that you don't need to know every single nitty gritty thing, which the exams sometimes ask about. It can be kind of like trivia. My take on that and on programming in general is that you can always look stuff up and reference the documentation and it's not necessary to memorize everything. So I'm not necessarily a shining example of how to pass this exam. I just wanna share what worked for me and I would definitely reference my last video for a little bit more well-defined and planned out technique, but whatever works, works as far as I'm concerned. And so I hope you find this helpful in one way or another. Thanks for watching to the end. Subscribe if you found this helpful. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.